This video is on taking cube roots with Napier's bones. Disclaimer, I'm actually making this video for myself. I've just read through Napier's Rhabdology and have figured this out and I don't want to lose what I figured out. So there may be some errors or pauses, but if you come across this and it's helpful to you, then that's great. So um, I've got a lovely set of Napier's bones here. Basically, what Napier's bones are is just a multiplication table like you would find in an elementary classroom, um, except that it's cut into strips. So for instance, here we have all the multiples of five. Um, the set comes with two of each digit so that, you know, if you're working with numbers that have more than one of a digit, you've got that. In fact, I've purchased a second set, and you can see some of those bones up here that I'll be using in my work, you know, in case I have even more than two of the same digit per number. So the box works nicely as a frame for your work, although all of this fanciness isn't actually necessary. You can actually go down to your local hobby store and make some bones or rods of your own. Um, if you do this, if you purchase some little cubes like this and glue them together, each rod can actually have four different digits to it. Um, so that's nice. And there are also special bones that you can make. I have them here from the sets that I've purchased. There's a square root bone and a cube root bone. But these are also easily made using um, just cubes that you can glue together from the hobby store. So with that, let's go ahead and do our first example of a cube root. Um, if you are joining me for this, you might want to watch my video on square roots first. They are a lot easier, and I'll leave a link down in the description. So I want to find the cube root of 195,112. Our first step is to write our radicand, the number that we're trying to take the cube root of, and to split it into triplets starting from the back. That looks like a decimal, it's not. I'm just splitting the number into um, the parts that I'm gonna be working with. So you'll notice this cube root rod has four columns to it. You've got the digits here, you've got squares here, but then these look like sort of random numbers, as do these, 0, 0, 2, 6, 12, 21, what is that? But let's mask those last two columns if you look at the first two, these are actually the perfect cubes taken together. 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 5 cubed is 125. So those are the cubes. And as we do our work, um, for part of the time we'll be focused on the first half of this rod or bone, and for part of the time we'll be focused on that second half. So I just have the part that we don't need right now covered up. So the next step is to work with this first triplet, look at our perfect cubes, and find the one that's closest to 195 without going over. Well, let's see, 6 cubed is 216, that's too high. 5 cubed is 125. So that's the closest to 195 without going over, 125. And that came from 5 cubed. So 5 is the first digit in our answer then we're going to subtract and bring down. So doing the subtraction gives me 70, but I bring down the 112. And I'm going to call this number here our first result, because I'm going to need to refer to that a couple times, and I want a name for it. So that's our first result. In order to move on to the next step, what we need to do is take our first digit, which is 5, we need to square it, so that's going to be 25. We need to multiply it by a 3. I'm going to do two examples in this video, and in between the two examples, I'll show you some algebra. But you might want to be thinking about why 3? Where does that 3 come from? 25 times 3 is 75. So my next step involves placing a 75 in front of the cube root rod. So, 75. The placement of the rods takes care of the place value, by the way. That is a 75, the 7 being in front of the 5. 
So I again want to look for something that's close to the number that I'm concerned with without going over. This is what makes it more complicated than taking square roots. However, we're going to be subtracting from this number not once, but twice. And I need to make sure that my estimate is not so close to this number that there's not room to subtract off um, another reasonably large number. I know that sounds confusing, but hopefully watch the two examples and it'll, it'll be okay. So I need something close to 70,000. If I come all the way down to the last row, um, this is actually in the 60,000s. Um, it's got a 9 in the 1s place, 2 in the 10s place. We've got a 12 here, carry the 1. 7 plus 1 is 8, so this is actually 68,229. Now 68,000 is close without going over, but maybe it's too close. So this is kind of like long division. You, one of the steps is estimate. I'm actually going to go with the 8. I think that's going to be my second digit. Here, again, I'm going to carry, so I'm going to be in the 60,000s. And so I think it's going to be close without being too close. So I'm going to say my second digit, which I sometimes call B, is 8. And we're going to write, write out the result here. Just write it down. The ones place is a 2. Tens place is a 1. Uh, hundreds place is a 5. Thousands place, let's see, 6 plus 4, that's 10. Carry the 1, 5 plus 1 is 6. So I get 60,512. I'm going to subtract that off. I need to do some borrowing here. And we get 9,600. So to do this last bit, what we need to find is um, 3 times 10. And again, think about maybe y a 3 and y a 10 times our first digit, which is 5. And then we're going to multiply it by the second digit that we just found, 8. But it's going to be by 8 squared. Okay, so this is the next multiplication that we need to carry out. I need to find bones that are going to give me this number. 3 times 5 is 15, times 10 is 150. And then we're going to use the rods to multiply the 150 by 8 squared, which is 64. And this is where the other half of the um, cubing, the special cubing rod, comes in. So I could have gotten the 64 right here. That's the reason we have a list of squares. Um, but I know I'm multiplying by 64, so I'm going to go ahead and even cover that up. I need to create a 150 out of my bones or rods, if you want to call them that. Okay, so in order to do that, I will multiply the 150 by 4. So that's going to be right along here. So 150 times 4 is equal to 0 in the 1's place, 0 in the 10's place, 6 in 100's place. And then I need to multiply the 150 times 6, because I want to multiply by 64. So I come down here to the 6, and I have 0 in the 1's place, 0 in the 10's place, and 9 in the 100's place. You know what? This isn't really a 6, it's a 60. So I'm going to multiply this by 10, which gives me 9,000. Well, if you put those parts together, we get 9,600. That does go in evenly. And so this number was a perfect cube. I have found the cube root of it. And that cube root, our answer is 58. So why does this work? Let me try to help out with a little bit of algebra. It may not explain it fully, but hopefully it'll help at least a little bit. So again, I do have a video up about square roots. It's linked in the description. Square roots are pretty easy. You're just continually doubling as you're doing your work. And the doubling comes from 
the two. So as we come down, it's a basically a two-step process. If you have a two-digit number, you're going to find your first digit A of what you squared, your square number, and then you find your second digit B, and that's going to be multiplied by a 2A, and then we're going to have a B squared at the back. If you cube, however, you get a result that's quite a bit more complicated. Part of what makes it more complicated is that you've got an A squared B and an AB squared. So you're not just multiplying A's and B's together, but you have squares as well as linear terms that you're working with. And you see the threes in there. Remember earlier I was saying, why do you think you're multiplying by three? So as you come down here, this is where we get our first digit A, and that's just A cubed. So we just use our special cube rod, and we look for the cube. Um, for the next bit, remember that I wanted, I needed to put these rods up front, and these came from 3a squared. Well, the 3a squared is sitting right here. That's what I was doing here in order to get the 75. Once I have that in here, that's followed up by a cube. B times B squared is B cubed. Okay, so those two pieces sit right there together that give us this part of our first result. But then this business at the back, where I needed to multiply 3 times A times 10, and then multiply that by our B squared, that's actually this piece on the end. So that may take a little bit of thinking about the, the multiplication by 10 has to do with place value. This is a two-digit number, so your A is actually in the tens place. We're multiplying by the three because of this three right here that comes about in the um, algebra expansion. Honestly, I know this process looks really hard, and in these days of cell phones and calculators, why would we do this? But this is before cell phones, before computers, before pocket calculators, centuries before we even had electricity. And this sort of thing actually did shorten the amount of time um, that people spent finding square roots and cube roots and doing other sorts of um, mathematical operations. So now that we've seen how it works and we've seen one example, let's do another example. I'm going to reset my frame. Let's put these back. And the next example is taking the cube root of 12,167. So once again, I want to split it into triplets. You'll notice I don't have six digits this time. Did that on purpose. Wanted to show you where the split comes. We're always counting from the back. So I want to have those three digits at the back. I only have two in the front, but that's okay. We can work with that. So I'm looking for the perfect cube that is closest to 12 without going over. Well, 3 cubed is 27. That's too big. 2 cubed is 8. So the first part of my answer is 2. 2 cubed is 8. So I write it down. We subtract and we bring down. So there again is what I'm calling the first result. In order to find the rods that I need to put in front of my special cube root rod, I need to square the 2 and multiply it by 3. So that's going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. So we put the 12 rods in the front. And again, what I'm looking for is something that's quite close to this number, but maybe not too close because I'm going to need to do two subtractions. So this is 4,167. Let's see. This is ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place. We're in the two thousands, three thousands. Um, this is 4,800. That's too big. This one is only 3,000. This row here represents 3,627. That's quite a bit lower than 4,167, so I'm going to run with that. I'm going to estimate that our second digit is 3. 
And let's see, again, that was 3,627. We'll subtract that off. And we get 540. So the next thing that I need to do is that I'm going to move over here to the back of my special cube root rod. And in order to find the rods that go behind this, I need to multiply um, 3 times 10 times the first digit I got. This 3, by the way, is not that 3. This 3 comes from the algebra that we worked out. All of that is going to then get multiplied by 3 squared. Handy reference here, 3 squared is 9. I will be multiplying by 9. I'll go ahead and cover that up. Um, this is 60. So the rods I need are going to represent 60. I need to multiply 60 by 9, and I can read my answer off right there. It's 540. One's place, tens place in the diagonal there, hundreds place. That goes in evenly. So our number was a perfect cube. We have used up all of our digits, and in fact, the result is 23. The cube root of 12,167 is 23. Just a quick hint. You can work a little bit with um, the ones place digit in your answer. I was thinking about that as I was working here. I know that 3 cubed is 27. So in order to get a number that ends in a 7, I do want to be cubing a number that ends in a 3. And I did a similar thing for my earlier example when I chose the 8 instead of the 9. I know that 8 cubed is 512. And I'm double-checking by taking a look right there. Um, if I cube an 8, it ends in a 